Welcome to Tag Happy Tips. Today we're in DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to be talking to you about color management. Let's jump right on in. So a few things kind of off the bat we need to talk about and the reasons why I want to talk about color management with you folks today is one, it can help speed up your workflow. Once you start to get an understanding of color management, okay, depending on your workflows, uh, you can dramatically speed up your edit process and have higher quality output. Okay, the other thing is color management, the more you kind of deep dive into it, the more confusing it really does get. So I want to try and uh, reduce some of that confusion that you might have around that. I want you to realize that what I'm talking to you today about is a, a beginner's perspective, okay? Now the more you kind of jump into color management, the more you realize just how vast it really, really is. So just understand that this is a beginner's guide, okay? Um, and it's really doing nothing more than trying to get you stepping in the right direction and understanding the fundamentals to color management, okay? Um, so what is color management? If color management is kind of broken into two, two sectors, you've got the color science and you've got the gamma, okay? Now color sciences uh, are known as the sRGB, old school, very narrow in how many colors it can actually reproduce. Uh, from there, you move into Rec 709 or BT 709 that's been around for quite some time and we'll find that the majority of um, screens that we watch use the BT slash Rec 709, okay? As well as platforms like YouTube uses the Rec 709 color space. Okay, from there on are these new high dynamic range uh, devices and screens, they can now accept a, a wider color space. Okay, and uh, these are known as the Rec 2020s or the, uh, the BT 2020s. Now you're gonna find every single ca camera is gonna have its own kind of specialized color space to get the most out of its own sensor. In Canon's uh, example here, it's known as the Canon, Canon color gamut. Now Sony will have diversion, Panasonic will have diversion, RED will have diversion, all the different cameras kind of out there will have their variation of this. Okay, and here's kind of like a pictorial, an actual color representation of what a color space is. Okay, you got your reds, you got your greens, you got your blues. If we kind of zoom in on here and move up a little bit, we got this kind of big blue triangle, very wide. Okay, um, that one is the Canon Cinema Gamut. Okay, we got this kind of purple one over here, which is the Essex. Um, and when you kind of start to deep dive into color management, Essex is kind of a color space is going to pop up a lot. Okay, just so you know. Kind of moving on down here, sRGB, black line, got this little triangle here. And as you can see, how many colors sRGB can capture and reproduce is minimal compared to, really is the smallest compared to all these others, okay? Uh, Rec 709 is a bit bigger than sRGB and, and, and um, Rec 2020 is a bit bigger again, okay? But that's kind of like a visual representation of what a color space is. Now on the flip side to color spaces, because that's all it is, color, you got your gammas. And your gammas is effectively the representation from blacks all the way through to whites. Okay, and I think quite logically a lot of people think of that in a linear finish, fashion. Okay, they look at a black halfway along, uh, the scale to white, um, the 50% mark, they might think of it as a 50% gray area, etc. Yes, you can get a gamma curve that has an equal representation from blacks to whites, but when we're talking about cameras and displays, okay, you don't use a flat linear curve, okay? You use something like a gamma 2.2, uh, which is what YouTube uses, just so you know. Gamma 2.4, you've got your different logs as well. So you've got your C logs from Canon, your S logs from Sony, and once again, different cameras, I think it's the V logs from Panasonic, different cameras will have their, their different logs, i.e. their different gamma curves. And what kind of is a gamma curve? Let's get a visual representation here. So here on the left-hand side, let's kind of zoom in. This is a bad gamma curve. Okay, you got the blacks over here, you got the whites over here, and we're not getting a smooth transition from them, okay? You're kind of getting it jarring, some dark grays here, some light grays here, you got some, the color seepage is unequal across the whole band. Uh, it looks like you've almost got two whites there. And if we kind of just move down and then focus on this blue line, you can see it's not a, a nice smooth curve. It's not, it's not even linear and it's all bumpy and all over the place. That is an example of a bad gamma curve. Now if we kind of go top right here, 
This is an example of a good, a smooth gamma curve that moves from black across to white and it's on a nice gradation. What that gradation is, is its curve, okay? And this is called the ideal gamma curve. This is nothing more than an example, but you can see it's a gradation from blacks moving all the way up to whites that gives us a smooth transition from blacks to whites. Okay, let's just quickly reset that. On the next slide we have here is examples of what different curves can be, okay? So you've got the gamma 1.8 being red, the gamma 2.2 being green. Once again, YouTube uses that. Uh, gamma uh, 2.4, gamma 2.6. Now the, the S logs, the C logs, the, lo the logs are gonna have their own variation of what their curve is gonna be in this regards. And when you mix effectively um, uh, a gamma curve and a color science together, okay you then have your image okay you do then have your your image either coming out of a screen or being recorded onto a camera so you need to understand what effectively color science you're using and what gamma you're using through your workflows okay now now that we've spoken about what an input is coming from a camera in those regards you then need to think about where your output is going. And an output example would be YouTube, a movie theater, Netflix as examples. Okay, just focusing on YouTube, YouTube uses the Rec 709 color science, color space, with the gamma curve of 2.2. And that's important to know. If you're using a bunch of different cameras coming into a timeline, images, etc., that have different color sciences and gammas in and of themselves, and you want to output it to somewhere specifically, Okay, you now, you now need to know how are you going to manage those colors accordingly in the most efficient way, okay? You can do it completely manually and, and don't really follow any rules, etc. but it's gonna be the long way, okay? And you can easily get yourself lost and potentially frustrated, okay? Uh, so we wanna put, put some sort of coherence to all of this. So let's jump across into the color page here. And step one is we need to be thinking about how DaVinci Resolve in and of itself is interpreting the information coming into it. Okay, so in the bottom right hand corner, you got your kind of got your cog wheel. That was a lot of windows. <laughs> got your cog wheel, um, and you want to come down and click on color management, and you want to go uh, DaVinci uh, YRGB color managed, and you want to give this bad boy a little tick. Okay, this is the most simplistic way for you to have DaVinci Resolve uh, help you manage your color for something like a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2 output. Okay, now if I quickly kind of untick that as an example, you know, go down to custom, you know, and under each one of these, I mean, you've got a vast, this is what I'm talking about, it gets exceptionally vast. You're also talking about the nits of a monitor you know, on some of these. I mean, I, I haven't even heard of what most of these are. So when someone says that they're a professional colorist, and they literally are, their craft is, you know, and, and they are one of the best in the world, you know they know their craft well. They are very much a professional in that field. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly tick that again. So that's kind of what I'd recommend to use straight off the bat. Once again, this is a beginner's introduction. All right, let's just kind of quickly go safe here. Now I've got three cameras, okay? Well, I don't have three cameras. I'm representing them as three cameras, camera A, B, and C. Now, all of this image, all of these images that I'm about to show you have come out of the R5. Okay, however, I'm, used, I'm using the different color sciences that the R5 allows me. I've got the Rec. 709, the BT-2020, and the Canon Cinema Gamma. For all intents and purposes, you could think of these as camera A, B, and C, okay? And every camera you're using has a different color science. The principle is still the same. Okay, so let's just say, hypothetically, I've got my A can down here and I wanna do some color correcting on that, okay? This, this tutorial today is not about color correcting, okay? Well, it's about color management. Let's just turn on my corrections and take a look and say, yes, I'm very, very happy with that. Okay, I'm now going to uh, copy and paste that color correction across all my different cameras because yeah, it should be fine. Uh, I can't see why uh, it won't be. They're all great cameras, they're very expensive and they all shoot in these fancy logs and things like that. Let's just do that and see what happens. Okay, so let's move across into the Rec 2020 color space now, i.e. let's say that's my camera B and I've, I've already have it active. I've got the exact same edit turned on that I was using on the Canon Cinema Gamut and straight off the bat, it's a different, okay? Your previous edit here is useless here. You literally have to rework it, okay, to balance these clips out, okay? Obviously the goal in a movie, in a documentary, a TV series, 
uh, even YouTube, like any sort of when you're using multiple clips and cameras is to balance it all out to look the same. Cool, let's just follow this logic forward and let's say we um, copy and pasted the same edit onto Rec 709. Cool. It's even worse now, okay? Like we're getting super saturated colors. Okay, we can see down here on the spider, they're, they're literally clipping, okay? Uh, over into the greens and moving up into the reds. My skin tone looks horrific, okay? Um, and a lot of people would probably go, oh, there's a simple way to resolve this now, okay? Um, for example, we go across into here uh, under effects and we type in trans, okay, and we look for the color space transform, okay? I'm just gonna right click on my node here and go add node, boom, and go color space transform. Easy, I've done my edit the way I wanted to do it. All I gotta do is just convert it uh, and uh, so that the software understands what I'm using, okay? So if I click on that node and bring up color space transform, uh, and we go input color space, okay, this is the Rec 709 on my camera C. So I'm gonna scroll down through the list, Rec 709. Okay, I'm using the uh, S-Log3 as my gamma, and I wanna output that to YouTube. And YouTube is, uh, once again, Rec 709, where are we here? Uh, it's all alphabetical order. How, there we go. Rec 709 and uh, YouTube is uh, Gamma 2.2. Bam. Oh, we would expect it to clean up. No, because what we've done is we have done a color correction on a clip, okay, that has so much more information in the color space that then once we have then moved that concept of a correction into a color space that's teeny tiny in comparison, it, the damage is already done in that regards, okay? So adding a color space transform tool is not gonna help you. Okay, the correct way to do this, okay, uh, in the most efficient format, because you could literally sit here and, and manually correct all of your shots between all your different cameras, but that's time consuming, okay? The, the fastest way to do this would be to, cool, go back to your, your, your Canon Cinema Gamut, your camera A, for example, your best camera that you've got on your shoot, Okay, and step one is we want to add a second node, and on that second node, we want to add the color space transform tool straight off the bat. And as soon as we turn that on, DaVinci Resolve goes, ah, okay, I see what's coming in, I know where you want it to go, okay, um, uh, insofar as the color spaces and the gammas, and I'm gonna do an automatic correction for you. And that's what we get straight off the bat. Okay, now I've done a bit of a correction down here, so I'm just gonna break that, add that to there and then bring that up to there. Boom, that is now my edit that I wanna keep and I wanna replicate now across my other cameras that are using different color spaces, okay? So a simple way to do that would be to open up the gallery, just click on power grades, okay, right click then on the, uh, the image that you've just graded here and go grab still. Okay, that's then gonna grab a still, effectively this, and place it over here. It's kind of like a, a favorite uh, that you can use any time. Let's go across to our BT 2020 color space and we're gonna drop that on. Boom, done. And straight off the bat, it looks horrific. Okay, that's because, let's just kind of rearrange these so it looks very familiar to the last. That's because this last node here with the color space transform tool is still set to the Canon Cinema Gamut. Okay, so if we then move that down to the BT2020. Uh, rec, rec, uh, that's why I can't find it. Rec 2020, boom, it brings us back into where we need to be. Okay, likewise, so let's go down to the Rec 709. Let's throw our edit on there, it's horrific. Okay, uh, let's just kind of tidy that up. I'm just doing this so we've got a level of visual coherence between the shots. And going across to our color transform uh, tool, and this one here is a Rec 709. Bam, done, it's cleaned it up, okay? It's very, very now simple to then move between all your different shots in your timeline, okay? Um, for efficiency, okay? That was one reason I wanted to talk to you today about understanding color management for efficiency to speed up your workflow and your edit. Now let's jump back between these edits. So we've got the BT709, okay, the BT, uh, the Rec 2020, um, and you can see these, these two color sciences are much closer together and the difference between them, if we just look between the, uh, there's a bit of a difference in color and tint, okay? 
Uh, but for all intents and purposes, the heavy lifting is now done for us. Let's go down to the, um, the Canon Cinema Gamut, okay? And we're gonna find that it's gonna be slightly different, okay? It is a different color science, okay? But once again, the heavy lifting has happened for us, okay? So, quick recap. Step one, you need to understand what color science and gamma you want to bring into your workflow and where you want it to go, okay? Bringing it into the workflows of naturally through your, your cameras, let's say, and your camera's gonna be recording in a color science, i.e. Rec. 709, Rec. 2020, Canon color gamut, okay? It's also gonna be recording in a gamma, a gamma 2.2, a 2.4, a C-log, an S-log, etc. You need to understand that coming in. Okay, you also need to work out where do you want it to go as an output? Is it going to YouTube? Is it going to a TV? Is it going to Netflix, etc.? Okay, once you know where you want it to go, you can then work out what color science and gamma that that platform uses. YouTube uses Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.2. Okay, once we go into DaVinci Resolve, uh, the color tab, okay, we want to set up the color management like this. Once again, this is a beginner's kind of crash course, okay? Then we want to add, is that gonna let me, nope, boom, nope. Let's just close that down. Then we want to add our color space transform node and implement the data, okay, uh, in so far as how we're going to be using it. Once we've done that, we can then go back and turn on our edits, we create a still of those edits, right click, grab still, cool, that's gonna land us in the stills or the power grade section. We can then copy and paste that information across onto our other cameras, camera B, camera C, and different color spaces and gammas, okay, uh, with the final step then of clicking on the final node, the color space transform node, and just implementing the correct color science and gamma of that camera and that recording. Okay, once you've done that, then all the heavy lifting is done and you only have to do teeny tiny changes to your clips to get them perfectly aligned. I'm Tag Happy. If you've made it this far, thanks so much. I really hope you've learned something along the way. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, etc., any more information that you can enlighten the, the community around color management, put some comments below. I'd appreciate it and I'm sure others will as well. Till next time.